In this series, we're going to talk about nodes in DaVinci Resolve for color grading. And in particular, in this video, we're talking about the most basic one, the serial node. So if we start by simplifying things by saying a node, you can see that kind of as a glass container. So a container that we can see through. But as soon as we start making an adjustment to one of the containers, we're filling up with those adjustments and the next container or the next node will be seeing the previous one and seeing those adjustments as our new starting point. That means that if we had two nodes, the second node will now start by seeing what the first node created and have that as a starting point. If you look at how a node is looking inside the Vinci Resolve, it has two inputs and two outputs a green and a blue input and a green and a blue output. The greens are where our footage is coming in and our footage is going out of the node again. So you can see that as connecting to the previous node or the input of the footage and going out to the next node or to the output of what we are actually seeing when we are viewing the footage. Those are the most commonly used. Then we have the blue ones, which is our keying or masking. So if you select something in a node, that's a key with a power window or a qualifier, something else and then you can actually put that key onto the next clip as well. So say that you selected something in one node and now you wanna make an adjustment. So you make an adjustment to that part, but now you wanna make another adjustment, but with the exact same selection. So you can make another node and connect the blue output and the blue input. That way you'll combine or move the key onto the next node as well. So that this node is only seeing what the last node did and only seeing what the key selected. So on the left side, everything is going into the node. It's looking at what was previously done or looking at the footage and having that as the starting point. If there's nothing in the node previous to it, it'll just look straight through it. It's not doing anything to the footage. It's not damaging the footage. It's not doing anything. The footage is just going straight through. On the other side, we are outputting whatever we did of adjustments inside this node or inside this glass container and outputting it to the next node that will then see this as the starting point. That's enough talk and illustrations. Let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and have a look at what it actually means in a practical way. All right, we're now inside DaVinci Resolve and we're just gonna work with this clip as our way of viewing what we are doing. So I've set up four serial nodes here. To add another node, you can just right click on the previous one or one of them and then add a serial node before or after. And that'll just combine the nodes with the green output and the green input between the nodes. Here is our starting point. This is our footage coming into the node tree. And here's our endpoint. This is what we are viewing. So as long as everything is connected and all the nodes are enabled, can disable them by clicking on the number or using command D, we can see what is being shown inside these nodes. So let's make an adjustment to the first node and have an example here. So the first one we're gonna use here, we're gonna do something to the second node and that's gonna be our contrast. So I'm going to move into the custom curve here. I'm just gonna do a slight S curve here to create some contrast in our image. Now you can see that nothing has happened in the first node. And there is a way of seeing a little bit more contrast than these. It's a very small picture and faded out. But you can see that something has happened here. If I disable it, you can see now it's all faded. And now these two have the contrast as well. That means that nothing has been done in these other ones. So if we turn these on and off, nothing will happen. But now in this node, we have our contrast. Let's say now that we wanted to add some exposure or adjust the exposure. And we do that in the node before. So an example here, I'm gonna call this one exposure. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna raise my gamma a little bit to brighten up the image. Now, everything is the same across all the nodes because we did it before. Now, all the nodes has inherited this information. So essentially, what the contrast node is now seeing is this image, whereas before it was seeing this image that was a little bit darker. So if we have a node here and we want to apply some adjustments before this is happening, in this case, the contrast, we can still do that before. So you can apply the nodes in any kind of order and direction you want, but you do have to be a little bit careful with what you do. So an example here is, let's go to node four and call this greens. So what I wanna do with these greens is I wanna turn them yellow. So I'm going to head into my curve here. I'm going to do my hue versus hue. I'm going to make a point around here in the yellow. And then I'm going to make a point here around in the greens. And then I'm going to drag up until our greens here become a lot more yellow, as you can see here. Now they are a lot more yellow. Let's push them even a little bit further. So if I turn this off and on again, you can see all our greens out here turn pretty much yellow and 
It's not a particularly good look, but maybe that's what you're going for. Maybe that's part of your adjustments. Now, if I went into the note before and I said, this is for desaturate, I could go into my note here and say, okay, we'll target the same area, but now I want to remove all the color, all the saturation from the green. So I'm going to drag these down. And immediately you can see now nothing is really yellow, but if we turn over to our greens here, the first thing we did, and turn that on and off, almost nothing is happening. We have a little bit happening here that it turns from green to yellow because we didn't remove everything. But essentially this node is not really doing anything anymore because we already said to the desaturation here that we removed the greens. So this node essentially cannot do anything anymore. Now, if we were to say, okay, I'm gonna put this node after instead. So I'm gonna add another serial node. I'm going to click on this node and copy and then paste it here by using Command C and Command D. Now we'll have a different look because now we're desaturating the greens after we've already moved them over to the red or yellow area here. So now our desaturation is not really doing anything because we're doing it after instead of before. So it makes a difference when you're doing your adjustments and when in the node tree they comes in because right now the greens are looking at a desaturated image that has no greens and cannot adjust anything. But in the case that we do it the opposite way around, so we turn off the desaturation here and turn it on here. Now this is looking at this image with ha which has no greens and trying to desaturate them and there is nothing to desaturate. So if we wanted to desaturate the greens but we still wanted that yellow look, this would be the correct way of doing it because now we're desaturating all the remaining greens that might have been in the image instead of just removing them completely and not having any control over them anymore. This was just a practical example of how you could go about it and how you move back and forth and how every node is looking at the previous node as that's its starting point now. And we are always seeing what the green output here is seeing. So as long as we turn these on and off, these are turned off now, that means that this output is just going straight through and going over here now. And that was pretty much the simple explanation of what a serial node is. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it and I hope it helped you a little bit better to understand what nodes are in DaVinci Resolve. Until next time, take care.